And we now come to the very last speaker. This is uh, Professor Anthony Atama from Nigeria. He is from uh, the University of Nigeria in Nzuka. And he will talk about self nano emulsifying drug delivery systems of anti malarials. Please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, let me first of all use the opportunity to thank uh, the organizers once more. I promise you that uh, I'll be very brief because we have all come a long way. Yeah, um, I want to talk about the uh, self non emulsifying drug delivery systems of uh, these anti malaria drugs. We've been talking about malaria, malaria, malaria. So there are some slides I would like to skip because of uh, uh, repetition. Yeah, um, nanotechnology can transform uh, old drugs and add a lot of value to old drugs, as we all know. And that is one of the targets which we, my research group, we have been working on, working on old drugs, applying nanotechnology to at least bring lifeline to these new drugs. And as we know, artemisinins are the mainstays of uh, malaria treatment currently. And like uh, the one of the speakers talked about, we don't use them in isolation, we use them in combination. And that, is why, that was why we used artemisinins in combination with the uh, lumepantrin in this our result. So we find out that uh, the malaria is still uh, ravaging Africa and uh, a lot of other places. So but today we'll look at self um, um, nano emulsifying drug delivery systems. These are just new drug delivery systems where you mix um, is an isotopic mixture of surfactants, co surfactants, and a drug so that they can self emulsify when in contact with the uh, aqueous fluids. So, that you can see the sample which we formulated self nano emulsifying already. So, once they come into contact with aqueous, aqueous systems, they self nano emulsify by a little agitation, and that will give you self, they will give you nano emulsions. In our research, we used uh, some of these our uh, oils, which is oleic acid, which is very common, to be 80, 80 and the capmol, MCM, which we uh, got from uh, some of these uh, industries. And I formulated uh, the micro, so the nano, self nano emulsifying emulsions using mixtures of uh, surfactant, co surfactant, at the ratio we have there. First of all, we carried out solubility studies to be sure that there are drugs were soluble in the necessary in the oils. As we see, we screen many oils and many surfactants, and we, at the end, uh, identified three, oleic acid, capmol, and then twin as uh, the basic uh, materials for the formulation mm -hmm. together with our drugs. So we also decided to look at the phase diagrams to know the regions of uh, self non five formulations where they will be able to uh, generate nano uh, emulsions. And then at the end, the three is to one ratio, and then two is to one ratio of the surfactant, co surfactants uh, gave us the areas that uh, we needed. And then we have violated the self uh, nano emulsifying systems using uh, emulsification time and robustness to dilution, and then possibility of uh, drug uh, precipitation, among other things. So at the end, uh, we found out that our emulsions were robust, nano emulsions were robust, formed within two minutes. Uh, with uh, drug contents greater than 78%. Uh, uh, and there was no drug precipitation, no phase separation uh, in uh, 0.1 normal HCL, which is a common uh, fluid we use for evaluations. We also looked at the FDIR to be sure that uh, the drug um, state, the molecular state of the drug, or the drugs were maintained in our formulations. And at the end, we found out that uh, they were still uh, intact. Then we went ahead to look at uh, the PCS, that's the particle size of the formed nano emulsions. That's after self nano emulsification, we looked at the particle size, and then we found out that uh, using the Malvan particle, particle size nano sizer, uh, the particles were all within uh, less than 550 nanometers, so the nano emulsions, with the uh, polydispacity indices of between 0 0.267 to 0 0.451. We should, which we, why that was one of the reasons why we also classified them as nano emulsions, because sometimes there may be mix-ups between nano emulsions and micro emulsions. Yeah, we also looked at uh, the in vivo, in vivo aspect, where we, uh, we used the mice and then used the, the protocols of um, 
PETAS protocols, for the suppressive protocols to test. In that case, we, we like you say, if you put peroral, our non emulsions, we administer them orally and uh, use this uh, common, uh, not a common drug that we use in our country, go at them, manufactured by uh, Novartis here in uh, Basel, as uh, just to screen. This was just a screening, um, a screening uh, test that we did. So we administer the crushed, the powdered drug, you know, it comes in tablets. The powdered go at them, and then we, the, our non emulsions, we administer non emulsions orally, using a by oral garbage. So, and we monitor the parasite uh, clearance of this uh, the, our formulation, and uh, vis a vis other ones, chloroquine, and then uh, the controls together with the, with the co atom. But first of all, we, the strain of the uh, plasmodium we used was a plasmodium begay, which uh, we know is a, is a chloroquine sensitive uh, strain. We administered to mice, and um, we allied the mice, we passaged it in mice, and be sure, to be sure that uh, it could go, and then the mice now we administered and then checked the different uh, parasites by parasite counting. We administered different doses according to body weight. So at the end, we were able to come up with um, uh, that, uh, the, the figure which we are showing now, but um, we found out that uh, at the end, the go at them was uh, more sensitive in terms of the parasite were more sensitive to coatem, giving um, a very, very high up to above 60% uh, clearance compared with uh, our two is to one and our three is to one on emulsions. You know, like I said, initially we, we just try to screen the in vivo uh, experiment and uh, we needed to titrate the dose. This was a one-off uh, experiment. That is, was not repeated doses, it was a single uh, dose only. And you know that glucoatem uh, is really given for three days, all these uh, atomicinin combinations. The uh, atesunate, mamodiaquine, uh, atemicinin, lumefantrin uh, were given to it. But to find out that uh, one of the major reasons why we decided to get into this type of non-emulsions is that when, the, 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 a, when a patient uh, uh, presents with malaria the, the, and the malaria is diagnosed, the patient is giving coatem or all these other combinations and is requested or the, the, the physician or the pharmacist asks the patient to go and take this medication together with the fatty meal. Uh, taking it to a fatty meal is advising the patient to take it with a fatty meal is, um, is a kind of a blanket, I mean, a, a very, very blind instruction because you don't, wouldn't know the, the quantity of the fatty meal that the patient will take. So it's based, it was based on that that we now said, okay, since that is the norm to take the fatty meal, why not formulate these drugs with fats, with lipids, so that uh, in that case, one could regulate ab initio the, 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 the quantity of the lipids that will give the desired bioavailability. And then we know that, um, or it's established that the bioavailability of a lumefantrin component of uh, the combination is increased by by increase when you administer, administer with fats. That's why, that's, why, that's why they say administer with fatty meals. And by so doing, you increase the bioavailability of lumefantrin. We know that artemisinin is, acts faster than lumefantrin, and then lumefantrin stays longer. So what the part does is also to increase the bioavailability of uh, lumefantrin and then bring about parasite clearance faster. So it was based on that that we now decided to enter into this. And we, we, we know that uh, if we titrate the dose, up higher, we, can, we could achieve, instead of three days treatment, if we titrate the dose higher, we could achieve one day treatment using this uh, medication. So based on that, I, like I promised, I wouldn't want to take our time longer. We concluded that um, SETS, NETS, that is self nano immunosfine drug delivery systems, is, um, is, is a promising delivery platform for atimeter and lumefantrin. Although for this our screening stage, Coatem performed better than uh, our nano emulsions. But that was, like I said, just a one of uh, a one dose, not titrated in terms of a uh, number of repetitions and the rest of them. So I want to acknowledge uh, the, the people that uh, we have been working together, especially uh, Professor Dr. Mula Goyman of uh, TU Braunschweig. I have worked, he introduced me to nano medicines research when I did my postdoc in Germany. And then my master's and PhD students, whom I've uh, been able to also introduce into nanotechnology, nanomedicines research 
my group now, Drug Delivery and Medicines Research Group, is just a young group which formed last year in my institute. And we have been able to come up with uh, some, uh, some uh, publications. As you could see in um, the conference edition of uh, our European Journal of Nanomedicines, we have an article there still on this atimeter and lumefant train. Then uh, some of the companies that uh, have supported us with uh, uh, materials, especially Kroda Europe, that, that uh, gave us um, oleic acid. They sent oleic acid to us. And then the Abitech Corporation that gave us Capmore and at Emzo Pharma, a pharmaceutical industry based in Nigeria that I've been collaborating with. They have been supplying me atimeter and lumefantrin. So I want to thank all of you for listening and then um, also uh, thank uh, everybody for being patient. At least I was thinking that uh, towards the end that everybody would just leave because we have come a long way. Thank you very much once again. So, we come to an end. We are a bit late and I apologize for not being a, having been able to manage this session better, but it was a full session and, and you have seen that there were some constraints happening. I would suggest we, we skip the discussion. I mean, we all need a break. And uh, I recommend that those who have uh, questions, please contact the speakers directly with a coffee. This is more pleasant and you may even get more information out of him or her. Is that acceptable? Thank you. <laughs>